Hey everyone and welcome back. So in this video we will be adding the functionality to spawn the instant static meshes on our side floor. So if we go back into the floors folder we'll go to the bp underscore floor side class and we'll open this in the blueprint editor. Now the first two things that we need for this we want to add a box component so we'll just go add component box and this is a box collision and then on top of this we want to add the instanced static mesh. So we'll find the instanced static mesh and just make sure that this sits directly below the box that you've just added. So this is going to all be run on the construction script. It's going to be very simple and I'll run through what this is doing as we go through. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the static mesh's uh, location is relative. So we're going to control drag in a reference to that and we'll pull off of this and we'll just set the world location. Okay, so set world location. We want to get a reference to the box component that we've just added. Um, and in fact, I just realized, I think we want the box to be sat on our static mesh. So the hierarchy of this should be the scene route that we have, uh, the static mesh, the box, and then the child of that will be the instant static mesh. So just make sure you have that set up the right way. Uh, and if you need to just zero out the uh, location again, because sometimes those can change. Uh, with that done, we'll pull off of the box and we we'll get the relative location. And of course, we're just going to plug that into the new location of the instant static mesh. So we'll plug this in first to the call to the parents construction script, which I uh, ran through and explained in the previous video. And once we've done this, the next thing is we just want to clear. So if we get another reference to the instant static meshes, we just want to pull off of this and clear instances. So this is just going to make sure that uh, we shouldn't anyway, but just in case we did for some bizarre reason, uh, have any already spawned instance static meshes. We don't want to duplicate them or uh, copy over them. So we're just going to comp uh, completely clear all references in this instant static mesh as it were. And also what we want to do before we go through any more of the code is just select the instant static mesh itself. And we're going to add the static mesh of the cube to this and we can leave this as the, uh, the default cube material for now and if we go over to the viewport uh, you'll notice that nothing happens because we need to actually programmatically spawn these into the world so at the moment it's just holding a reference of what it will spawn if it's told to create some instances we can see down here we don't have any instances we can of course fill these manually but the way that we're going to do this is we'll do this programmatically so that we can have some randomization on the construction of this uh, blueprint so back in the construction script, we want to pull off of the clear instances and we're going to do a for loop. And this is completely up to you, but I find a number of uh, 10 different cubes per tile looks pretty good. It makes everything look quite full and gives some randomness to this. And then we'll pull off of this again. And for each of these uh, for loops, we want to add an instance to our static mesh. So in fact, it's going to be easier again to get a reference to the static mesh pull off of this and find add instance and we'll plug that into the for loop that way. Okay, so we can right click on the instance transform, we'll split the structure pin, the rotation we'll leave as it is, the scale will be randomized as well, uh, but we're going to focus on the location first of all. So quite simply for the location, we're going to control drag in a reference to the box again, we're going to pull off of this, we'll get the component bounds, and if you haven't used this before, uh, don't worry too much. I will go through this in a second, but it's going to make a lot more sense when I can visualize this rather than trying to explain it. And at the moment, the visualization won't work. So we'll pull off of the, the bounds that we have for the box. I'm going to get a random point in bounding box. So we can see it here, random point in bounding box. We can pass in the box extent as well. And that quite simply will be the location of the instance that we have being created. So if we hit compile, uh, when we hit compile now, we can see that these cubes are being created and the good thing about using the construction script is that every time we hit compile a new version of that construction script is run so we can see what it's doing is uh, i'm going to change the color of this floor again because it's not very clear kind of randomizing these 10 cubes into slightly different locations every time we hit compile so this is all very bunched up at the moment and that's because the uh, the box extent the area of which this can spawn is still very very small so if we start dragging this out, we can see that they start moving away from each other a bit. So that is the box extent on the X axis. Um, and I find a number of 400 fits the floor perfectly. And then we want to do the same thing for the Y. So again, we can see as we move the box extent out. Um, and if I move the box up, in fact, you can see what we're moving. Uh, this is the box extent here. So it's just a standard collider. And within that extent, which we want to be 400 by 400, we're just going to set the cubes to spawn somewhere within that position. Uh, and then what I did as well for my version is I've made the Z axis 0.1, just so that um, there's no variation in the height of the location they can really spawn. Uh, with that, I'm going to move this back down to zero on the Z. And the next thing we want to do is to control the height of these. 
So if we go back into the construction script, uh, the next thing we're going to do, which again will be random, is the, uh, the scale of these. So I'm going to split this into another structure pin so we get the X, Y, and the Z exposed separately. I'm going to pull off of here and I'm going to get a random float in range. So random float in range. We'll copy that and we'll plug that into the, uh, the Y value. And again, we'll copy this and plug one into the Z value. So the Y and the X are going to be very similar. Uh, for the minimum, I'm going to pull off of this and promote this to a variable. And we'll just call this one min x, y. Which is why I'm going to also plug this in to the minimum value for the y axis as well. Of course, if you did want that full randomization, then just create a min x and then a min y separately. Uh, and likewise, I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to call this one max x, y. We'll control drag that in and we'll plug that into both of the maximum values. Um, and I just find, if we hit compile, I just find a value of 1 on the minimum and 2 on the maximum works quite well. Uh, and the main thing which gives the visual interest I find here is the Z scaling. So I'm going to make the minimum of, uh, let's say, uh, 2 and then a maximum of 20. So again, if we hit compile, we can now see that we have these cubes. And of course, we can see them from below here, but that's not going to be a problem in the game. But if we hit compile, we have these cubes moving around and looking quite nice and random, kind of like a weird low poly tower scape or something or a cityscape type thing. And that is really the side floor set up and ready to go. So when we drag one of these into the world now, and we're obviously going to be spawning these, uh, but whenever we spawn one for the whole row that we spawn, then we're going to get something slightly random happening per block. And again, because this is on construction script, when you're moving it, before you press play, uh, the construction script is constantly being run, so we can check some different randomization of these. So I think that looks pretty cool. That's going to be uh, the visual aesthetic for the final version. We're going to add some colors and new materials later as we go through, uh, but that is the functionality for the side floor dump. So I'll leave this video here for today. As always, if you've enjoyed these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.